Super Friday feature. You'll be glad that you are in this service. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Our God has graciously declared this month as our month of what? The knowledge of God. Tell your neighbor the knowledge of God. Woo! Wonderful. You see, as a Christian, what you require most is to have the knowledge of God. There is no other thing other than you having the knowledge of God. Because all things pertaining to life and godliness is in who? It's in Christ Jesus. Second Peter, uh, if we go to Second Peter 1, 2, and 3, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of his Son, Jesus Christ. It says, accordingly, all things pertaining to life and godliness is in who? In Christ Jesus. So what do you need what I need is to have adequate knowledge of God. If you have adequate knowledge of God, if you have adequate knowledge of Christ, then you are set to be a trailblazer in the kingdom of the mighty name of Jesus. You are set to do exploit in the mighty name of Jesus. And no wonder, Daniel said in his word, he said, those that do know their God, they shall be what? strong and be mighty and they shall do what? Great exploit. And that is your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone that is in this vigil, I pray for you tonight. You shall do great exploit in the mighty name of Jesus. As you begin to learn the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God that will take you to that place which God has appointed for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The knowledge of God is very important. It's the foundation for life. And last month was our month of the wisdom of God. If you look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8, let us read that for us. 1 Corinthians 12, where they listed out the nine gifts of the Spirit. The knowledge of God, the gift of the word of knowledge is number two. So after wisdom, the next thing is the knowledge of God. The gift of the word of knowledge. That is what you have to go for in my eternal Jesus. Are you there? First Corinthians 2, chapter 12, verse 8, yes. He said, for to one is given by the spirit of what? The word of, word of wisdom first. So he said, but to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. That is number one. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same spirit. Thank you very much. Now you see, to one is given the gifts of the word of wisdom. To another is given the gifts of of the word of knowledge. Last month was our month of the word of wisdom. And this month is our month of the word of knowledge. What is the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge is simply God's knowledge. Tell your neighbor God's knowledge. That is the word of knowledge. It is simply God's knowledge. Because we have the knowledge of God as well as the knowledge of Satan. The knowledge of God as well as the knowledge of Satan. So when you see somebody have the gift of the knowledge of the word of knowledge of God, then that person will be operating in the spirit of discernment. Tell your neighbor the spirit of discernment. The person will be able to see you and God will be revealing secret to that person about you because the word of God the word of knowledge knows all things. There is nothing too difficult for that. He just sees you and he begins to notice about you in the mind, in the mind of Jesus. And you'll be surprised. How come this person knows about me? It's a gift. The gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of discernment. They work together. He's able to see you. 
is able to see things and you know exactly what that thing is about. It might be more Jesus. Without no person teaching him, he has not learned in the school anywhere. He just know because God is the one showing him that thing. Because the spirit is able, the spirit of God is able to reveal it to his spirit to the mind, to the Jesus. Now, because today's service is the first service in the new month, we are going to do it in our usual way for a better understanding. So today's sermon is Psalm 919, Psalm 919. For those following our series, Psalm 919. And the topic is understanding the knowledge of God for his mighty power. We are looking at part one. And it is subtitled, Covenant Day of the Knowledge of God. See after me, Covenant Day of the Knowledge of God. Our Christian journey begins with a covenant. It is a covenant. You must be in the covenant lineage. The covenant blessing lineage of Christ. We have the old covenants and the new covenants. Christ is the new covenant. So you must be enlisted. You must be registered in that new covenant. That is the beginning. For you to take delivery of the knowledge of God adequately. Because you see, in the Old Testament, it was difficult for them to uh, be able to comprehend God. They are not able to understand God. It was difficult. And there was close heaven. They didn't have the opportunity many of us are enjoying now. There is open heaven for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And the spirit of God was scarce in those days. Selected people have it. But nowadays there's an outpouring of the spirit of God. Many people that have been choosing, they have the spirit of God. It was difficult those days. Very few. Abraham was selected. Moses selected. Saul selected. Anyone they selected, God put his spirit upon that person. And that's why Joel, the prophet, said, God gave him the prophecy of what is going to happen in the latter days. He said in Joel 2, 28, he said that it will come to pass in the last day, there will be an outpouring of the spirit of God upon all flesh. He said your sons and your daughters, they shall do what? Prophesy. He said your youth, they shall see visions. Your elderly, they shall dream dreams. He said and your maid servant and all of that, they shall all prophesy. And we are in the last days. There is an outpouring of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is common. Every Christian you see possess the Spirit of God. In fact, for you to be a Christian, you must have the Spirit of God. Because it's the Spirit of God that is in you that makes you a Christian. Romans 8, 9 says, anyone that does not have the Spirit of Christ in him is none of his. So what make us, a, what make us Christians is because we have the Spirit of Christ in us. When we talk of the knowledge of God, from the very beginning of the Bible, the first book of the Bible, and even the first chapter, revealed the creative power of God. It revealed it to us. If you look at your Bible, you open your Bible to Genesis. From Genesis 1, from chapter 1, verse 1, up to the last verse, 31, you will see the creative power of God. God was able to reveal to us his knowledge. Everything you see there that God wrote there is the theoretical as well as the practical knowledge of God. All the principles of God all the laws of God, the things that make God God, God showcased it. He manifested it in that first chapter. He was revealing to us his creative power. We are told in the Bible in Genesis 1, verse 1, he said in the beginning was what? He said, God created the heaven and the earth. 
He said, and the earth was without form and void. He said, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. He said, the spirit of God moves. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Immediately God said it. Light came forth. Because he spoke it. He said it and it happened. Anything God said. And God started creating things. Now, that book, who wrote it? Of course, we know the Holy Spirit is the writer, is the author. But it was written by who? Moses. Moses was not born then when all of these things happened. But God was able to reveal the secrets of creation to Moses. God revealed the secret. And Moses was able to write how many books? Six books. The six books of Moses. He wrote, he wrote Genesis. He wrote Exodus. How many? Let's call all the books. Okay, five books. It's not the one that wrote Joshua. Joshua was written by Joshua. So let's call all them. It's five. <laughs> I was mistaking Joshua for Moses' own. Now Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, five. So the next one is what? Joshua. I thought Moses wrote Joshua. You know he's the, he's the, the leader of Joshua. Joshua was his boy. I thought he wrote Joshua. But Joshua wrote Joshua. Who wrote Joshua? Joshua. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are good disciples. Now he wrote five books. He wrote to the very beginning. And this can only be possible by the inspiration of God. Because we are told in the scripture how the scripture was written. Yes, sir. How the scripture was written. Can we go there? Let's see it. Second Peter. Is it second Peter? Second Peter 1. Verse 19. He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Let's material read for us. Second Peter 1, verse 19. Now listen. He said, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Well, until you do well, ye take heed and glory. When came such a voice to him from excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I'm one place. This voice we came from the heaven. We heard. That is not the one I'm looking for. Go to 20. 20. He said, knowing this first. Good. This is where I'm looking. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. But prophecy came not in old time by the will of men. But holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Thank you. You see, the Holy Ghost is actually the writer of the whole Bible. From Genesis up to Revelation. But he used holy men. Moses was a holy man. You see, he used them to write the descent. The Spirit of God moved in them and they were able to write it. And God revealed, give them knowledge. God gave them knowledge. You'll be wondering how this is possible. Let's go to Exodus. Let me show you some kind of things that God does. Whatever knowledge you have now, especially knowledge uh, like gifts, it is the doing of God. It is God that has given you. You didn't give yourself. Let us Matthew read for us Exodus 31. You will see a man they call Bezali, God gave him special knowledge and wisdom. Read Exodus 31 verse, 31 verse 1 for us. And 2. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezali, the son of Urim, the son of Hor. <laughs> Of the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with what? The spirit of God. In wisdom. And understanding. And in knowledge. 
and in all manner of workmanship to despise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass. Thank you very much. You can stop there. You see it? So it is God that gives us the spirit of God. It can manifest in diverse form. And that is what, if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, you see it from 8 downward. It shows you the nine gifts of the spirit. It says some have been given the spirit of the word, the gifts of the word of wisdom, of the word of knowledge, of the word of faith, and some healing, miracles, signs and wonder. The, spirit, the, 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 the gift of speaking in tongues and the gift of diverse tongues, interpretation of tongues, the, the gift of discerning. All these are gifts given. You see people operating in that dimensions. You see people are able to you, 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 they just know things. You'll be surprised. Something nobody taught them. They'll just know it. Even when they teach them, they know it even more than their teacher. You heard David, he said, <laughs> he said the word of God has made him wiser than his teachers. If you go to Psalm, you see it. Say, he has made me wiser than my teachers. Because the word of God is ancient and modern. It is new every morning. So we must embrace it in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, for the benefit of, this is the first teaching on the knowledge of God. And you know how we do it in this church. We want to go to the very beginning. The first time knowledge was mentioned in the Bible. Let's open our Bible. Let's go to Genesis 2, where we read. The first time knowledge was mentioned. Genesis 2, a smart reader will read for us. It was mentioned in... Where was knowledge mentioned? In 17, it was also mentioned, the first time it was mentioned. Let's see. Are you in Genesis? Genesis 2, we see when God... Now, it was mentioned in 9 first. It's not in 17. 17 was the second one. So let us mother read 9 for us. Genesis 2 verse 9 before we read 17. It is important we know the first time it was mentioned. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the side and good for food. Now listen, oh, you underline this. Say the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You see, the first time knowledge of good and evil was measured. Then go to 17. You can even read it from 16. Or you read... Okay. Read... Read 16, 17, and 18. And the Lord God commanded man, saying... Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Woo. You see what happened? Now, the question one will be asking, why did God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in that place? You see, this is the first time we are hearing about evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Who is the, who, who introduced good and evil? It was God. Who created good and evil? It was God. God is the one that created good and is the one that created evil. So that is why if you want to know good, it is God that will tell you what is good. If you want to know what is evil, it is God that will also tell you what is evil. He created good. He created evil. But he did it for a reason. God does not do things without a reason. If you look at that passage, he created so many pleasant trees. 
And among the pleasant trees, they tell you of a particular tree that is very nice. They call him the tree of life. And he said, man should eat of all the trees except one. One is off limit. Man, sh Adam should not eat from that tree. And that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, when God was speaking, Eve was not there. Was Eve there? Eve was not there. God was talking to man. He has given this commandment first before he now created Eve. Because he saw that it was not good for Eve to be alone. That there is need for him to have a helpmate. For Adam to have a helpmate because Adam was restless. Adam needed somebody to be with him. There was need for Adam to have a helpmate. He wasn't there. But you know, we don't want to flog the story. What happened was that Adam and Eve, they sinned. Devil came to deceive Eve in Genesis 3. And both of them ate of that tree. And what happened? Just as God have said, they died that day. Now, but I want you to go back. Let's read the commandment of God. God gave a commandment. People are talking about the tree. The tree is not about the tree. It's about the commandment of God. Tell your neighbor, it's about the commandment of God. When God gives an instruction, you must obey that instruction. Even if it's not a tree, it's another thing. You must obey. Now, we are told, verse 16, it says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, if you look at that 16, 17, in your Bible, 16, you will put it. 16 is the law of obedience and live. You can put it in your Bible. That is the law of obedience and live. It's the number one law of heaven and, and earth. When you obey God, you live. It's the law of obedience and live. If you obey God, you live. Then the second law is the law of disobedience and die. He said, the day you live, do you eat of that tree, you shall surely do what? Die. If you disobey, you die. Now, what is disobedience? Disobedience is you've committed sin. What is sin? Simple instruction, neglected. Anything God say, and you do otherwise, you have sinned. So this, this soul that sinned must die. Right from the beginning, God has given that law. And that law is still in force today. That law has not changed. It's still intact today. The soul that sinned must die. Every sinner must die. Every sinner is condemned. There is need for you to have this knowledge. Because some people don't know. They think they can be committing sin. They can be doing sin, doing all manners of things, and think God will have mercy. God will not have mercy. If God can kill his own son and did not have mercy upon his son, do you think it is an unbeliever he will have mercy upon? If God can kill his own son because of sin, sin that his son did not commit, eh? do you think it's an unbeliever he will have mercy upon? He will not have any mercy. You see, he will not have any mercy. If he can kill his own son, he will kill any person. And that is why the Bible made it explicitly clear. He said, look, if you are a sinner, you are a condemned container. He said they are condemned already. Everyone is condemned. Every sinner is a condemned container. And this is made explicit in John 3, 16, 17, and 18. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. He said, God has not sent his Son to condemn the world, but rather he has sent his Son to save the world. That whosoever believeth in his Son, that person is not condemned. But whosoever believeth not in his son, 
that person is condemned. Not that he's going to be condemned. He says he's condemned already. The already condemnation started from now. You see where we are reading now. That was when the law of disobedience and death. That is when the condemnation was. You need to have that knowledge. It is not Jesus. Is it Jesus that committed sin? And that is why you see, he's saying he did not send his son to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. Is it not Satan that caused Adam to sin and Eve? It is Satan that caused them to sin. And in case you, don't, you did not understand, he went for that. In John 3, 19, 20, he began to explain. Let us imagine that. I love that scripture very well. He said, this is the condemnation. In case you don't understand, this is the condemnation. That light, who is the light? Jesus is the light. He said that light is coming to the world and men love darkness. Men like to sin. They like sin rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither come to the light. At least his deed will be revealed. If you come and do it, they will see it. But he that doeth truth come to the light that his deed may be made manifest. They are rotting God. Thank you very much. You see it. Now, Bible is so sweet when you look at it, but we need to have knowledge about all of this. When you have knowledge, you find out that the Bible is simple. It's not difficult. It's a book of knowledge. It's a book that shows you everything. It shows you things about God. The manifold wisdom of God. The knowledge of God that is beyond human comprehension. It's unsearchable. The infinite knowledge of God. God is so powerful. You need to know about God. Let me give you some qualities about God. God is omniscient. Do you know what that means? God knows all things. There is nothing he does not know. Are you getting it? Have you seen somebody that knows all things? You cannot hide secret from him. If he sees you now, everything about you, you know, from the day they born you up to now, he knows. He knows everything. His own is so dangerous. He knows your past. He knows your present. He knows your future. You see God? He knows everything. It's all knowing. And it's omnipresent. It can be here. It can be in Ghana. It can be in America. It can be in Australia. At the same time. Can you be like that? Can you be here and be in Lagos? <laughs> That's why they call it Almighty God. He said the beginning and the end. Nine carry first, nine carry last. <laughs> when I start race, you are running with God. Huh? Nine day your first. Before you reach there, you don't reach there. <laughs> eh? It's too much. And some people that don't know him, they'll just be, if you really understand who God is, you just be double, you just be greedy. It's too much. In Revelation 1, he explained, he tried to explain himself so that you understand who he is. He said, look, it is me that was, it is me that is, it is me that is to come. <laughs> you see the English? He said, is he that was, is he that is, that is the present, is the past, is the present, is the future. He said, I'm God Almighty. I'm the beginning. I'm the ending. So you see, I'm the Alpha. I'm the Omega. So when you talk of the knowledge of God, he knows all things. And that is why you need to meet him. You need to meet him to show you secret, to help you. He knows. Eh? Look at all the demolition going on and all of that. Some people are surprised about the demolition. Don't you think God knew that it was going to happen? He knew now. Nah. He knew. He always knew about things. What will happen five years, ten years? You did talk five years, ten years. He told the brother 400 or something years. Imagine somebody tell you 400 or something. Is there any person that will live 400 years here? <laughs> he told the brother 400 years. <laughs> something that will happen. To tell you how he is. He's God. And that is why people are just behaving. will just be looking at you. Tell your neighbor it's not about you. Some people think it's about them. 
Huh? They'll think it's about them. It's not about you. It's about God and his kingdom. I'm telling you. It's about God, his kingdom. The only importance you have eh, is that you are in his kingdom. <laughs> you are in his kingdom. Eh? You are part of his kingdom. It's about God and his kingdom. When I'm saying you are in his kingdom, some people will not be understanding now. Who is the kingdom? It's not Jesus. Jesus is the kingdom. And you are inside Jesus. Jesus is inside you. You are in his kingdom. You see our Lord's prayer. He said, our father. Who art in heaven? I not be thy name. It's God they are praising. The theory is God. He said, thy kingdom come. Jesus don't come. Thy kingdom come. It is that kingdom we are in. We are inside Jesus and Jesus is inside us. We pray God to us on Sunday the mighty name of Jesus. Now, you see this teaching is a very sweet one. I'm taking it small, small. I'm enjoying myself. The knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is... Now, when we talk of the knowledge of God, I've been able to explain to you that God created evil, God created good, God created everything. Some people will be wondering, how can God create evil? This we can see in Isaiah 45, verse 6. Let us Matthew that read for us. To see how God created evil and created good. So that you know, as good disciples. The question is, what is God doing with evil? Are you there? Read it for us. Isaiah 45, verse 6. Please move, move, move. Let's move. Yes. 60, Isaiah 45, verse 6. Now listen, oh. God is telling you that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, there is none beside me. I'm the Lord. There is no one else. I formed the light. I created darkness. I made peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Thank you very much. You see, nine they do all of them. Why is he doing that? Let's go to Proverbs 16 verse 4. Let's know why he's doing that. Because Proverbs 16 verse 4 help us to know why he's doing that. Say they create all these things. Are you there? In Proverbs 16 verse 4, we are told that God created everything, even the evil, for the day of evil. <laughs> I, read for us. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wickedness for the day of evil. That is not King James Version. Please read King James Version for us. <laughs> uh, anyway, instead he said, even the wicked. Is your own King James Version? Uh, okay. Some will tell you he has created everything, even the evil for the day of evil. But the same thing is wickedness. You understand? Now, there is the day of evil. It is God that have created it. The day of punishment. The day of dealing with people, those bad, bad people. And that is why you see, God, anything that happens, eh, he enjoys it. I used to give, I told you an example, I said, like Mr. President now, all those people disturb him, the rebels, if he catch the rebels, he arrests them and send them to Kuje prison. Is he not happy? He's happy. If he heard that they've arrested some of the uh, people disturbing him, all of that, and they put them in Kuje prison, he said, very good, lock them there. You'll be happy. You see it. But the people will not be happy. Kuje prison is not a good place to go to. They will not be happy that they are put in Kuje prison. Eh? That is what God said to If you go to Deuteronomy, let me show you. Go to Deuteronomy 28. As much as that will risk still for us. You see what God is saying. <laughs> eh? Risk is still for us. Let's enjoy it. You see, we are discussing all of this so that we'll be able to understand the knowledge of God. It is Far more than is beyond human understanding, human compression, except it is revealed to you. Now, listen all in 63. Is it and it shall come to pass? 
He said, as the Lord rejoiced over you, God was happy over you to do you good and to multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you, to bring you to naught, to zero. And you shall be plucked from off the land. Whether that goes there to possess. You see God, the two occasions is rejoicing. When good occur, he's rejoicing. When bad occur, he's rejoicing. Why? And this is what we call the negative glory and the positive glory of God. When God do you good, is the positive glory of God. When he decides to do you evil, he's saying evil to you. You understand? It is his negative glory. In all, he rejoices. You see God? Not in the vessel. They are for all situations. <laughs> and that is how you look at the Bible. In Psalm 48, verse 2. It's a beautiful for all situations. The joy of the whole world. Our God is too much. We pray God give us a Sunday the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's go to. We have two major kind of knowledge. Two major kind of knowledge. Number one is the good knowledge the good knowledge of God it is called the good knowledge of God then the second one is the evil knowledge of Satan evil knowledge of Satan everything good is of God everything evil is of Satan because why God does not do anything bad Even when God do evil, the evil is a good evil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When he do evil, that evil is good. Because God does not do evil. We are told, he said God is righteous. There is no unrighteousness in him. God is light. There is no darkness in him. So when God punish people and do all of that thing, he did it because they are rebel, they are stubborn. That is why you go to Joel 2. In Joel 2, verse 25, he said, We restored in years that the caterpillar, the palm worm, you know, and the canker can worm. He said, My great army, <laughs> which I have sent amongst you, he's calling them his army. You see, all the devourers that he had sent, when he called, he said, He will restore them back. He will ensure that things are good for you if you repent and do his will in my name of Jesus. He said, if my people that are called by my name, if they humble themselves and repent, I will heal them. I will bless them. But if they humble themselves and repent, many will not repent. That is the problem. As 1 verse 19, is if they are willing and obedient, they shall do what? Eat the good of the land. If they are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. Job 36 verse 11 and 12, is if they obey my commandment and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and pleasure evermore. He said, but if they disobey, I will take away knowledge from them and they shall perish. When God wants to destroy a man, he just removes knowledge. It is knowledge that he uses. Are you getting it? It's knowledge. The man will kill himself. A trailer will be coming. He goes, enter. Knowledge, no, they go, enter. Boah, he don't die. Because there is no knowledge. We pray God give us some standing to my eight, to the Jesus. He says, oh, four, verse six. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is very important. We pray God help us. I pray for you tonight that God will give you his knowledge in the mind, in the mind Jesus. Every one of you, you will be blessed with the knowledge of God. The blessing of God that make a tree that added no sorrow in the mind, in the mind Jesus. So we have seen that we have two major kind of knowledge. The evil knowledge and the uh, good knowledge. The good knowledge is of God. The evil knowledge is of Satan. Now, how do we get them? Now, whatsoever God tells you is a good knowledge. Everything God says, whatsoever God tells you is a good knowledge. Now, whatsoever Satan tells you is an evil knowledge. Whatsoever Satan say is a lie from the pit of hell. 
Satan will not say anything that is truthful. Because Satan, there is no truth in Satan. Are you getting it? There is no truth in him. Look at how Jesus Christ describes Satan. Let's go to John. In John 8, verse 44. It's what will read for us. Jesus describes Satan. Let's see how he describes Satan. John 8, 44. Please move quickly. Let's John 8, 44. Yes. Now, Jesus was annoyed. He was telling them, He said, Ye are of your father, the devil. He said, The loss of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Who did he kill? Adam and Eve. He killed Adam and Eve. And about not in the truth, there is no truth in him. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaking to lie, he speaking of his own because he's a liar. And the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Thank you very much. You see it? Satan is a father of lie. Have you seen anybody that tell lie more than Satan? No person. He is the expert liar. In fact, if you give a lie detector, you go pass him. <laughs> he knows how to lie very well. There is no truth in him. That is it. no truth in him. There is no truth in him. He doesn't have light. You understand? The light of God is not in him. His own light, not fake light. We pray God give us a Sunday the mind in the mind. Jesus. So whatsoever. And if you look at the first man, Adam and Eve, Satan went to deceive Adam. Uh, Eve. He deceived Eve. What did he tell Eve? He told me, leave uh, Eve a lie. What did he tell you? He said, you will eat it, you will, you will not die. Did Eve not die? It was a lie. He deceived Eve. He said, look, you will not die. Your eyes will be open. You will have knowledge. Which stupid knowledge? Knowledge will make you them not say they're naked. Is that the knowledge? Is it knowledge of nakedness? Is that what they are looking for? They are not looking for knowledge of nakedness. He said, look, he deceived Eve and Eve fell. Adam fell too. So that is why we must not. The Bible says, resist the devil and they will flee. The devil cannot give you knowledge. And that is why, you see, people that do not know themselves, they will go and meet unbeliever. They will go and meet a devil. Say, devil, advise me. How can an unbeliever advise you? What advice will darkness give light? Huh? You, you have the spirit of God in you. You are going to meet somebody that does not have the spirit of God. You say, please advise me. Advise me. What kind of advice? Or you are meeting, you say, borrow me, I beg. Hey, help me with money. Hey, please, borrow me money. I need money and all of that. If you borrow, no trouble you there. Darkness can't borrow you money. <laughs> it's in trouble. You understand? So there are things you must, you must not do. When you, see, that when you see Christians saying certain things, it's because of the knowledge they have. You see Christians say, look, I cannot borrow. I don't want to borrow. I will not borrow. Never. Because God has made you a lender, not a borrower in the mind of Jesus. He said, thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. The question is, why is God saying I should not borrow? There must be a reason. And this you will see in Proverbs 22 verse 7. He said, the rich will rule over the poor. A borrower is a slave to the lender. Once you go to borrow money, you are a slave. The lender is a person that is in the upper hand. You understand? You are supposed to be a lender. If they want to borrow, you can borrow them. It's even among the cost. You see? People that are cost, they are the one always wanting to borrow. Say, please, you go borrow me. You understand? A cost person. You see? And they will always be borrowing. You will not be able to lend to them. They will lend to you. You will not be able to bear. It's a cost. Let's read it. It's in the Bible. Go to Deuteronomy Deuteronomy 28. Read 43, 44. Let's see it. It's there. Yeah? It's a cost. So it's not a good thing. It's there. They always look for who go borrow me and they, they borrow me. I borrow this, borrow this one. You don't know you are, you are a cost person if they are borrowing you. Stop meeting people to borrow you. So we borrow matches. So we borrow pots. Borrow everything. Stop borrowing. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43, 44, thereabout. It's among the causes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now listen, it's a stranger that is within thee. 
that shall get up stranger they are unbelievers they are not the genuine people stranger say they shall get up above the very high and thou shall come down very low he shall learn to thee that stranger or that unbeliever shall learn to thee and thou shall not be able to learn to him he shall be the head he will be your head and that shall be the tail. You see, that is not our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall be the head. They shall be the tail. That is our portion. We are supposed to be lended. We are supposed to be lenders. And that is why if you go to 12, 12 explain it very well. He said, look, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out treasures in this season upon you. He said, thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. A Christian is not supposed to borrow. Don't borrow at all. Huh? We pray God give us on Sunday the mighty name of Jesus. So we have seen. Quickly, our time is moving. For tonight, what we want to do, we want to look at, we are taking it gradually. Today is just covenant day of the knowledge of God. So that's why we are looking at the essential thing. Now quickly, what I want to do tonight, we want to look at the essential ingredients. The things you require to take delivery of the knowledge of God. What are the steps? What are the things you need? These are important things. If you don't have it, you cannot be talking of uh, the knowledge of God. You need them. Number one, you must be in the new covenant. Tell your neighbor new covenant. You must be in the new covenant. If you are in the old covenant, you come to the new covenant. And this new covenant is easy. It's new birth. You must have a new birth and a new spirit. Tell your neighbor new birth and new spirit. That is the first step. The good news is that that new birth, new spirit, automatically gives you a new mind. You have a new mind inside. You even have the spirit of love inside. You have power inside. All of this you can see it in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Let us read that for us. 2 Timothy 1 7. We say God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That sound mind is the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 21 let us know that Christ, we have the mind of Christ. Christ is in us. So we have his mind in the mind of the Jesus. It is important you know that. So that is the number one. It is foundational. If you don't have this, you cannot be talking of knowledge of God. The foundation, that is why the word of God says in uh, uh, Psalm 11, verse 3. He says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Your righteousness cannot succeed. You cannot claim to have righteousness when you don't have the foundation. And this was what was happening with the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes. They love God. They like to, but they lack something. And Jesus looked at them. Kind. When Nicodemus came to see him, at night, one of the Pharisees came to see him. Nicodemus was healing him. He said, oh, Master, no one will do these mighty works you are doing. We know God is with you. You are really, God is with you. He looked at Nicodemus. He said, Fairly I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus now answered him. He said, ah, somebody went on old, like Abiso, I go enter my mother's womb a second time to be born again. He looked at Nicodemus. He said, look, verily I say unto you, if a man be baptized of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He said, that which is spirit is spirit. The spirit is just like the wind. The wind blows it. You don't know where it's coming from, where it's going to. That is how the spirit of God is. He said, you need to have new birth. What he was telling uh, Nicodemus that you need to be born again. You need to have a new birth. You need to have a new spirit inside you. Because this old spirit cannot help you. That was what he was telling Nicodemus. Nicodemus, they look. He, Nicodemus don't understand. He said, look at you. You say you are a teacher in Israel. This small thing you don't know. What if I begin to tell you heavenly things? <laughs> so you see it. Nicodemus was confused. But Nicodemus loved Jesus. If you look at to the end, 
It was Nicodemus and Joseph Arimathea. Of Arimathea, two of them were the ones that went and buried Jesus. You see it? He followed Jesus. He followed Jesus. Followed Jesus. He loved Jesus. He was following, 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 following. He did not leave Jesus alone. He loved Jesus. He was following and all of that. Even when the people, they were against Jesus, they were against Jesus, he was still following behind. He wanted to rescue Jesus, but the thing was too much. He couldn't because the plan of God and they killed Nicodemus. They killed uh, Jesus, I mean. And when Jesus died, they have to go and ask for the body as a honor, as a respect to, to Jesus. So you see, so that is foundational. When we are talking of taking delivery of knowledge from God, and that is why somebody that does not have this foundation, somebody that does not have this new covenant, that is not in this new covenant, and does not have this new spirit, how can you be talking of knowledge of God? The person cannot have knowledge of God. It will just be like a sounding symbol, like a drum or something. When you are talking knowledge of God, he doesn't understand. You understand? Because there is no way he can take delivery of it. He cannot. Because it's through the Spirit. Everything is revealed via the Spirit. It's just like now. If you don't have DSTV, can you be enjoying the channel that is in DSTV? Your DSTV wire don't cut. Or you never pay your subscription. Can you be watching? You know, till you pay your subscription. So you see, the spirit of God is the subscription. If you have the spirit of Christ inside you, then you can connect. It's well explicit in the Bible. Let's read it. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. Let us read. Uh, we have it in uh, 9 and 10. Read from 11. 11, 12, 13. You see what it's saying about the spirit. The spirit is very good. 11, 12, and even 13. Please move quickly, move quickly. He said, what man knoweth the things of man? Except the spirit of man. Yeah, which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. We have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us all of God. Thank you very much. You see, it's very explicit. So once you have that spirit, Abba, a five, the thing is life subscription. Tell your neighbor life subscription. Not like DSTV every month, they say, go pay, go pay. This one, you know, the <laughs> it's for life. Huh? You have direct access to God, but there is a condition. You know the subscription. Who can tell me the subscription? Eh? Somebody said this morning. Uh -uh. There is a subscription you pay. Uh -uh. Somebody said it just now. You can't do anything without that thing. Huh? He said the just shall do what? <laughs> faith is the subscription. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. <laughs> that faith is what you use to get anything in the kingdom. It's the currency of the kingdom. You must have faith. When you give your life to Christ, there's a small one they give you. You have a small one. <laughs> eh? You can increase that one. Even that small one is enough for you. Are you getting it? The Jesus Christ faith. We are told in Hebrew 12, verse 2. It says Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So that faith there is, is okay. You understand? But if you can increase your faith, the more you have more faith, you understand? The more you get uh, reward, more rewarded than my eight, and the more Jesus. Because Jesus, when he sees great faith, he cannot resist it. He must answer to great faith, and the more eight, and the more Jesus. He loves great faith because it's about him. The faith is about him. You understand? You're, you are putting your belief, your trust in him. There's something you must understand about faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. That is. You, 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 are, you are believing in Jesus. You trust him so much. If you trust him small, the faith there. If you trust him, the medium. If you, trust, you trust him where, where. So when you put your hope and trust in him so much, ah, the thing is sweeter. And that's why you see the story of the centurion. In Luke 7, 7. He could not. You understand? You know the story of the centurion. The centurion is a servant who was sick and near to death. And he heard that Jesus was coming. Passing an area. He said they should go and call Jesus to come and pray for his servant. But why they have gone to call uh, 
Jesus. Suddenly, truth, an advanced truth came into his head. He said, ah, why would Jesus even come here? Now that man is a very great man of God. The man can speak the word there. And my servant will wear. What is the point for him to come? So he now sent people say they should go and tell Jesus not to come again. That he should speak the word. And he gave example to Jesus. He said when they read, they should tell Jesus, say, in a centurion. A centurion is a commander of certain battalion of army. He said, I'm a centurion. And I will say to this soldier, go. This one will go. All the army, they, they obey him. Say, you sit down. This one sit down. Sit down. He said, just ask him be your car over soldier. He said, that is how Jesus be a guy over the world. That whatsoever he speak to the world, the world will do it. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of thing? If somebody can tell you, say you are commander of the world. <laughs> People, they get army. That is Jesus' army is the word of God. <laughs> yeah? He came to tell Jesus that you, you are commander of the world. The Air Force. Eh? Anything you say to the world, the world will do it. And wherever. So they came to tell Jesus. Jesus said, huh? He said, what kind of thing is this? He said, I've not seen such a great faith in the whole of Israel. How does this man tell me like this? <laughs> this man is touching a serious area. How the man knows he can get power like that? He can speak to air. The thing will go. And because it is sweeter, he said, take her. Let your servant be healed. Immediately. The servant, he, <laughs> he cannot, he didn't sweet Jesus. He was astonished beyond measure. He said, ah, so somebody know me like this? So whenever faith is applied, there was another woman too again. This woman was sick. No, the woman's uh, daughter was sick. Now the woman is not an Israelite. So now he now ran to Jesus. He said, please, I beg, come heal my daughter. Jesus looked at her. He said, look, the food meant for children. Why will I give it to a dog? <laughs> now the woman said, ah, master, look, oh my Lord. The one where, if the children, they eat, the one way for, for the table of the children, the dogs go eat that one. My Lord, I beg you. Eh? Jesus looked at the woman like this. How does this woman have understanding like this? How come he know? Eh? And really, the food... Of the children. If dog they are ready, they will chop. That is healing can go to the dog if the dogs are ready. And this woman said, My Lord. And no one called Jesus my Lord except that one which the Spirit has commanded. Jesus said, eh, Take her. Your daughter is well. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> so faith. Jesus does not play with faith. That woman, they say, had great faith. Centurion, great faith. Those are the two people with great faith. Because of their understanding. They understand the truth. They have understand deep knowledge of the truth. The woman no verse. Say they call me dog. You they call me dog. Or they call my picking dog. In no verse. Not the place where they look for something. Oh. Blind but you must. Now say that they drive and drive and agree. You know agree. <laughs> if you want something, you pursue that in the mind. Tell them Jesus. So we look at number one. Number two. Number two. We are just looking at all the vital things we need to know. Number two. Now, the spirit that is already in you will guide you into all truth. The knowledge of all truth. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to my father except through me. John 14, 16, he said, I will pray the father to send another comforter that will remain with you forever. John 14, 17, he said, Even the spirit of truth, which you all cannot see, neither can they know, neither can they understand, but for you, your miss is going to be inside you. Now, that spirit of truth has work. What is the work? We can see the work in, in John 14, 26. Let somebody read the work for us. Let's see. The mandate of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a mandate. And that mandate is to guide us into all truth. 
to show us here. Go ahead, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Thank you. You see the work? It is to bring you into remembrance. The spirit. You see when you stay here, past, you are teaching and all of that. It is the spirit of truth that will be guiding you. He will tell you this is this point, this is this point, this is this point. And sometimes people will be marvelous. How do you remember all this and how? Is the spirit of truth. That is his duty. That is his mandate. He will tell you things that are past, things that are present, things that are in front. And he will guide you. Now, in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You see, we started this, the new, I said, the first thing you have to have a new spirit. That spirit is everlasting life. Are you getting it? Now we are in number two. I said now, the spirit of truth which will guide you into all truth. You cannot know the truth without the spirit of truth. It is the spirit of truth that will tell you this is truth, this is false, this is lie, this is truth. It's the spirit of truth. You cannot be talking of knowledge of God when you don't know the truth. But the spirit of, of truth will guide you into all truth. So you see it. Then number three. Number three, you will now walk in the paths of righteousness. The right paths, the way of righteousness, the way of God. Nobody knows the way of God without you being directed. The way of God, you cannot know it. You see it? And that's why Jesus Christ said, I'm the, he said, look, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But you need the life first to get the truth. Then the truth will now direct you on the way. We are told in Proverbs 16, verse 25. He said, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof is what? Death. Destruction. In Proverbs 16, verse 2. He said, all the ways of a man is clean in his own eyes. But God wears the spirit. He said, commit, verse 3. Commit your works unto God. He will establish your thoughts. So who will direct you is the spirit of truth that will guide you. This is the right place. This is the place to go. This is not the place to go. So when you know the truth, the truth will be guiding you steadily. What is the truth? Is the truth not the word of God? The word of God is the truth. The whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the truth. And that is why you see when you read the Bible, you will see in Joshua 1, verse 7 and 8, he said, look, let somebody read Joshua 1 for us, 7 and 8, you see it. That you follow the straight way. Do not go to the left, do not go to the right. Follow the straight way. Follow the, go straight. Don't go to the left, don't go to the right. Follow straight. Then now said, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt meditate on it day and night, and thou shalt also have to do all that is written in it. It says, so as your will be made prosperous, and you shall have what? Good success. So you see it. For you to have good success, you need the truth to show you the way, to guide you the way, so that you go in the way of the right path in the mind of Jesus. You see how to, take, to get the knowledge of God. Without this you cannot be talking of the knowledge of God. They are very important in the mind of Jesus. They are very important to guide us so that we will not make mistakes in the mind of Jesus. What number are we? Good. Number four. You see, you can ask for the gift of the word of knowledge. You know, you already have the spirit of God inside you. And that spirit of God contains wisdom, it contains knowledge, it contains all those most wanted. But you can ask specifically, Father, grant to me the gift of the word of knowledge. I want to operate in the gift of the word of knowledge. You begin to request for it, you begin to ask for it. That you need the gift of the word of knowledge. You desire it. You want that gift. Matthew 7, 7. He said, knock, you understand? And it shall be opened unto you. He said, you've not received because you've not asked. Whatsoever you ask, you receive. James 1 verse 5, let us know. He said, look, you should ask. And if you ask with faith, you will receive it. Without doubting, you will get that which you ask for in the mind of Jesus. So that is why we must ask. When we ask, we are giving that gift of the word of knowledge. And if you look at 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31. He said, look, covet earnestly the best gifts. There are many gifts. The nine gifts of the Spirit. You can operate in the whole nine. You can operate in two, in three, in four, in five, 
He said, covet earnestly the best gift. You know, covetousness is not good. They tell you covetousness is not good. But when we talk of the spirit, you understand, the gift of the spirit, you can covet. You can covet spiritual gift in the name of Jesus. You can covet spiritual gift. And God will grant it to you in the name of Jesus. As you covet, I pray for you tonight, you should covet the gift of the word of knowledge. And God will grant it to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So that we are operating in that dimension. People will look at you and they say, what manner of man is this? How come you know this thing? How come you know this? You'll be amazed. There are things you don't tell somebody, they just know. You'll be wondering, how did you know? How did you know? It's the word of knowledge. The spirit of discernment. We show you, we tell you. We pray God give us a standing the mind to the Lord Jesus. Now we take the next one. Number five. Number five is for us to mix our belief with faith. Hebrew 4, 1 to 3. You remember the word of God in 1 Timothy 6, verse 12. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Now, the problem with Christians, when you talk of belief, many Christians believe. Belief is not difficult. Even Satan believed too. To believe is not difficult. If you ask any person, say, look, I'm believing God, I'm believing God. Everybody's believing God. I'm believing God for this, I'm believing God for that, I'm believing God. But you must go beyond believing. You understand? You must go and begin to mix your belief with faith. Because if you have belief and there is no faith, you know faith, belief is part of the ingredients of faith. You understand? Belief is part. I've showed you the ingredients of faith before. How many ingredients we have for faith? For when we talk of faith, a good faith soup. What are the ingredients? We have seven eights. Okay, call them. Let me know if you know them. Number one is now. Number two is belief. Trust. Hope. No, Jesus. No evidence. There is one more. Substance. The substance you are hoping for. You know, in Hebrews 11 verse 1, he said, look, now faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So the substance you are hoping for, this is what I want to get. So there are ingredients. Belief must be there. So if belief is not there, you see it, it will show and that is why most people's faith are amputated. You see somebody, they don't get faith. They will say they get faith. It's not faith. You understand? If you see faith, now faith, they make you, you'll be doing some kind of thing. You'll be like a mad person when you are saying faith. Are you getting it? It is faith. If you don't have faith, okay, look at the crowd we have. And we are keep on declaring that the Lord has said we are going to have multiple service before December. How many months is left? Is it not like six months left or five months left? But you'll be saying it. You have faith. You believe. You believe what God has said. That God is able to do it. He has said it. He's able to do it in the mighty name of Jesus. So you continue to say it. You hope against hope. You, it will look like it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You begin to say it. As you say it, you begin to say it in the mighty name of Jesus. There are things that will make you to say, ah, are you sure this thing will happen? Are you sure? It will, are you the one doing it? So why are you? You keep on saying it. You just say it. Have faith. As you are saying it, you keep on saying it. it will happen. Yeah? If you see, they talked about Abraham. Abraham staggered. God called him 75 years old man. He said he was going to give him a child. Abraham waited for 25 years before the promised child came. Is it not a long time? Very long time now. Abraham don't tire. I said, which one? If you know that Abraham was tired, go and read when Abraham was 99 years. Abraham was 99 years. The promised child has not yet come. When God started talking to Abraham, Abraham said, God, please, I beg, bless Ishmael, Ishmael, Ishmael. Bless Ishmael. The one went on the sea, this one, bless him. God said, look, I bless Ishmael. Said, but Ishmael is not the promised child. The one went on the talk is coming. And it was then God was annoyed. He said, look, by this time next year, the child will come. And the name of the child is Isaac. God not named the child. Because Abraham don't tire. Huh? 
Five years, don't go. Ten years, don't go. Fifteen years, twenty years, twenty-five years. Ah, which country? You say go up. I go to Apple. I go to Apple. And that was when God gave him the child. God decided to test him with the child. Abraham was ready that time. Did God wait, do wait till he talked 25 years? He said, go kill him. I go kill him, no problem. If I kill him, you go provide another one. <laughs> he was ready. Because his faith is now strong. He now knows, say, God, anything God say, it will come to pass. That is it. So God built you up. He built you up. Over time, you now have strong faith. You begin to trust God. When people don't trust God, you trust God. That your redeemer live in the mind, in the Jesus. And you get to a point, you don't even care. And that's why you see people that are strong in faith more than conqueror. They will say, look, even if God not do one, it does not matter. And you hear them say, look, if I perish, let me perish. You see the Hebrew boys? They were telling them, they say, look, our God is able to rescue us. But even if he chooses not to rescue us, we don't care. <laughs> the same thing with uh, Esther. Esther said, look, if I perish, let me perish. I don't care. So you must get to a point, and this is to love Christ unto death. Is anyone that tried to keep his life will lose it. But when you surrender your life, you will receive it in the mind of Jesus. So that is it. Your faith must be strong. And that is more than conqueror's faith in the mind of Jesus. When you have that faith, you begin to do great exploit. So we must mix our belief with faith. For we don't have the peace of God. We must miss it with faith in the mind of Jesus. That is our belief must be complete. We must, faith must be there. Any belief that doesn't have faith is not it. And faith, he says, show me your work. I will show you my faith. What are you doing? You understand? In preparation. What are you doing? We pray God give us a Sunday in the mind of Jesus. And the last one we are considering tonight, we are looking at number six. You must be able to keep the covenant detail. God is not a Father Christmas. <laughs> you know Father Christmas? On Christmas they will bring things and begin to give every person. God is not like that. God is a God of promise. But the promise there is a condition. There is a condition. And what is the condition? You will keep it. His covenant. You see, anytime he talks, there is always a condition. In Isaiah 1 verse 19, he says, if they are willing and obedient, if they are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. What if they are willing, if they are obedient, they are not willing? They will not eat. God loves a cheerful giver. You go give to God grudgingly. You go obey because he forced you. He wants you to obey willingly. All these things, if they are willing and obedient, they shall eat the good of the land. So there is a condition to all his promise. When God gives you promise, there is a condition. Always look for the condition. It's just like they give you a job to do. There is an employment they give you. Yeah, I don't get a job. Bro. What about the work? You check now, what is the responsibility? They say you come from money o'clock, from you read your, 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 your clock in, by 7 a.m. you must be at work and you are closing by 10 a.m. every day. Even on Sunday you are to work. Every day. Saturday, Sunday, every day. You are happy. How much are they paying? Say now 500,000 they are paying per month. Ah! The money be go. I go take them. They say on Sunday you go to work. Every day I go take them. Now be trouble you don't end us. <laughs> uh, because of the money. Say ah, 500 every month. That's a lot of money. Ah! Wait till that God will understand. I'm going to do my church for, for, for work. I will they pray to God. Eh? Even nowadays, they get online churches. I go connect. Pastor will understand. I go bring fat tight, fat offering. You will be blocking all the corners. <laughs> God will just be looking at you. Say, look at you. So you will not come to church again. You will not do service and all of that. So you see it. So we have to be careful. What did the word of God say in Romans 12? He said, look, I beseech you, brethren, that you present yourself as a living sacrifice. Did they say you present your money? You go there somewhere and say, Pastor, I'll give you money. Like some people now, they say, Pastor, pray for me. I'll give you 500,000. Or it's not enough. Let me make it 1 million. Pray, where, where? I know if you fast, Pastor. Fast for me. <laughs> Pastor is fasting machine. 
breakfast all day, then you'll be doing nonsense, eating, dancing, chopping. Pastor will be fasting for you. Now, Pastor will be mumu to the fast. <laughs> <laughs> we pray God help us in Jesus' mighty name. We must do the needful. You do the correct thing in the mind, in the mind Jesus. There is always condition. When God says a thing, you look at the condition. And the condition is that you must do the needful. There are certain requirements. And the requirement is the covenant detail. God loves his covenant. He does not play with his covenant. Let's read. Uh, go to Psalm 132, verse 12. Let somebody read verse 12. You read 12 and 13 for us. God loves his covenant. He likes to bless us, but his covenant, he loves his covenant. He will not break his covenant. But you, you should not break the covenant too, so that you enjoy. Are you there? Psalm 132, you read from 12, 13, and 14. Even. Now listen, he said, my children, we keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them their children shall also sit upon thy throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He had desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell. For I have desired. Thank you very much. You see it. But he said, if, what if they break his covenant? There will be a problem. If you break his covenant, there will be a problem. If they will keep my covenant, you see, when God talk all of this, they break his covenant. God was saying this with David. It was David. God said this. If your children will keep my covenant, what happened? Solomon entered the throne after David. What happened? After Solomon has entered the throne, the next person was Rehoboam. Rehoboam became foolish and God break the kingdom. The kingdom was divided. God gave ten parts to Jeroboam. And it was one part left for Rehoboam to begin to rule. Why? They break the covenant. And he left that one part because of David. I love David. I will, not, I will always keep a portion for David. If not so, he has given Jeroboam. And I saw every time they mess up, every time they, they will always mess up. Because they are covenant breaker. They will not keep God's commandment. God will tell them do this, they will do otherwise. God will say do this, they will do otherwise. So that is a problem. Our God is not a Father Christmas. But if you are able to keep to the covenant detail, if you are obedient to the covenant detail, then you will enjoy. He will give you knowledge. He will lavish you with knowledge and all of that. You will have wisdom. You will have understanding. You will be a trailblazer. You will be a high flyer. People will see you, they will marvel. And what was described in the Bible will be your portion. If you go to Psalm, uh, go to Psalm 1. That's what there is Psalm 1. Let's enjoy it. Is it Psalm 1 or Proverbs 1? Psalm 1. I love that Psalm 1 very well. Very interesting Psalm, Psalm 1. Let's read Psalm 1 as we close. You see, he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the uh, scornful. Scornful, they are uh, people that are foolish. His delight is in the law of the Lord, the covenant of the Lord. Uh -huh. And in his law does it meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. You see, it not, it's not a question what you do. Whatsoever I do, do with pure water, you say. If not pure water, now leave, you say. He said, whatsoever I do, it shall do what? Prosper. It does not matter where you did. You will prosper you in that place. Uh -huh. Now, they tell you, all of this blessing is only for those that keep his covenant. He said, the ungodly are not so. <laughs> he said, they are like the shaft. You know when you break melon, that's the shaft. He said, they are like the shaft. The wind will blow. They will just go away. Uh -huh. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. 
For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. The way of the ungodly shall perish. Thank you very much. You see, we've come to the end of uh, today's knowledge of uh, covenants, day of uh, knowledge of God. Now, you see this month, this month is going to be very interesting because when you have the knowledge of God, you know it. You understand? You will not disappoint God. Are you getting it? Because one good thing is that God will not disappoint you. Our God is reliable. We trust our God. But the problem is us. We must not disappoint God. But we only when we have knowledge of all of these things. And this whole month, we are going to study the knowledge of God so much. Nobody can finish studying it. Even if you want to go do from a first degree to PhD and all of that, you know fit. You cannot finish. Because the knowledge is new every morning. When they study one side, it's like elephant. You're there for the tail. You never have come. <laughs> the knowledge is so much. You understand? So, but God will help us in the mind. In the mind, Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We pray for those watching us from the internet, oh Lord. We give opportunity. If you are here, you've not given your life to Christ, or you are watching online, today is an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. If you know you've never been born again, you're born again, but say, what about doing what you're not supposed to do? You want to be reconnected back with Jesus. What a day for you. All you need to do is to put your right hand on your chest and see after me. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe in your name. I believe you are the Son of God. That you came into this world to die for me. And the third day you rose again from the dead. Thank you for saving me. I have no business with Satan. I reject him completely. In Jesus' precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. If you know you've done that prayer, um, if, you are from, if you are viewing from online, look for a Bible-believing church to attend. And God will help you to increase you in the knowledge of God. But if you are here, you've just done that prayer. I want to pray for you. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Jump out to the front. Let me pray for you now. Let me lead you to Christ. Word of Truth Life is brought to you by Living God Covenant Church Abuja, Nigeria and Maxell Express or Car Ministries.